Hi, welcome to another installment of The Kitchen Vixen. I'm your host, Elizabeth Brown, The Kitchen Vixen, registered dietitian and certified holistic chef, here to teach you to be a kitchen vixen too, because all it takes is knowing your ingredients, knowing how they work in your body, and putting it all together. So we're all going to be kitchen vixens in the end. And today, school is in, and we are talking about whole grains. Yes, the whole grain, not the partial grains, not the processed grains. We're done with that. We're not down with that. We're down with whole grains. And what is a whole grain, you might ask? Well, there are so many, so here's a list. But basically, it's rice, corn, triticale, amaranth, quinoa, millet, sorghum, buckwheat. Some of those, I know you're like, what the heck is that? And I'm going to show you. But let me tell you about some of my favorite whole grains. And first, let me tell you, what is a whole grain? Well, here's a picture of one. It's really quite enlarged because normally they're really, really tiny. I mean, there you go. See, that's what they look like. But this is a big picture. And whole grains have three things, three components. Processed grains, only one. We want three. The three things are bran. Okay, you know bran, oat bran. It got a lot of publicity because it helps to lower cholesterol. It helps you go to the bathroom. Very important. And so oftentimes when the grains are processed, the bran gets stripped away. We need that bran. It also helps to prevent certain types of cancers. And then we have the germ, another important part of the grain, because it's actually like the source of life for the grain. So it's where you get all of your B vitamins. You don't have to take supplements. You eat good whole grains. You get the Bs that you need. You know, like these Bs. No, not these Bs, but the B vitamins. The B vitamins help your body convert food to energy. Get it in your food. You get the best energy for you. And then in that germ, you also get that vitamin E. Remember, I told you you'd get vitamin E. This is a non-fat or a very low-fat source of vitamin E, and it's one of the few, because vitamin E is normally found in high-fat foods like nuts and seeds and animal products. So this is a vegetarian, low-fat source of vitamin E. Very good for you, very powerful antioxidant. Plus, you also get other antioxidants, some of which we have identified, some of which we still haven't identified, but they're basically the plant's way of protecting itself. We eat the food, and we, in turn, get the protection, too. Eat more whole grains. Got it? Okay. Then the third component, this is what's usually left when everything else is stripped away. It's the endosperm. The endosperm. The end of the sperm. Hmm. What is an end of the sperm? An end of a sperm is called the flagella. And it's what helps propel the sperm so it can get to the egg and fertilize the egg. But that end of the sperm, that's all it does, is it gives you that propulsion, okay? And that's really all the endosperm does in the food is it provides carbohydrates, which can give you some energy, but most of the vitamins and minerals are in the other parts, like the germ and the bran. So eat whole grains. And my favorite whole grain is one called quinoa. Is that how you say that? Quinoa? No, it's actually pronounced quinoa. Quinoa is my favorite whole grain. This is the phonetic spelling, quinoa. Say it, everybody, quinoa. And this is the grain that is the most versatile. But before you jump into quinoa, you might want to try some simple grains like oats and brown rice. And yes, you want the brown rice because it contains 11 more nutrients than the white. The white's pretty much stripped of everything, including the bran and the germ. So you want brown rice, whole oats. Those are easy ways to start. But quinoa is the most versatile grain, and it's the best because... It contains all of the essential amino acids. So normally your grains are lacking in amino acids, and so they can't necessarily help you build the muscle that you want to build but unless you add things to them. And that's why I describe eating whole grains like getting dressed. Like when you put on a perfect white top and you add the perfect jewelry, or if you're a guy and you have a nice pair of jeans to go with your nice T-shirt and it fits you well, well, then you've accessorized that outfit. And that's what grains are. It's like your plain palette. And you can accessorize it, you can paint it any way you want to make it the best grain for you. So we're going to start with quinoa. And basically to cook any grain, all you do is you take one cup of grain and two cups of liquid. It could be water or tea or broth. And each one of those could add nutrients. If you add tea, you're going to add antioxidants. And in the end, you get with quinoa, you're actually going to get three cups of quinoa, and a serving is a half a cup cooked. Now I want to show you a half a cup cooked quinoa. It has these little tails on it. That's how you know it's been cooked. 
and before it's cooked, it's really tiny, and I don't know if you can see the difference, but I'm a one-woman show, so do the best you can. And we take that cup of cooked quinoa with this little tail, and the little tail is actually the germ. So remember, that's where a lot of the nutrients lie. So we know it's in there in each little tiny grain. And quinoa is actually, it's called the mother grain. It's actually the, the staple grain of South America, and now it's also grown in the western part of the U.S. It's actually more of a seed, and it's the seed of a green leafy vegetable, kind of like spinach or Swiss chard. So you know it's very nutritious because you know greens are good for you, and you know you need to eat more of them. And if quinoa or whole grains are new to you, then I recommend checking them out in any grocery store in the health food section. You can find a company called Arrowhead Mills. They have quinoa and other types of whole grains, and they'll even tell you on the back of the package how to prepare it, just in case I'm talking a little too quickly for you. So I'm going to make a breakfast cereal today. That's what we're doing. Very simple. Half cup cooked quinoa, a cup of chopped apple, a handful of raisins and walnuts, and basically just so you know, a serving of raisins or walnuts is literally a handful. You close your hand, that's your serving size. And then we add a cup of soy milk, and that is our cereal. Plain and simple, very easy. You can do it. Just give it a try. In the end, this is the recipe. Half a cup cooked grain. It could be quinoa, it could be brown rice, it could be oats. And a cup of chopped fruit, whatever's in season. I used apple, it could be peaches or plums. A tablespoon of raisins, which is a handful. A tablespoon of walnuts, which is also a handful. And a cup of soy milk or organic whole milk or low-fat milk. And that is going to give you two cups for less than a dollar, for 340 calories, which is a great meal, 60 grams of carbohydrates, 6 grams of fiber, 16 grams of protein, 10% of your daily value for vitamin E. Remember, I told you, it's, this is a great source of vitamin E, and it's a low-fat source, plus zinc. And we're going to talk about zinc on our next show, because next time we're talking about aphrodisiacs, and somehow zinc and aphrodisiacs are related, and you'll have to tune in to find out why. Now, you also get 20% of most of your major minerals like iron, magnesium, copper, the K, that stands for potassium, and phosphorus, and manganese, and copper and manganese are very important to help protect your antioxidant system in your body. A lot of information, but basically eat your whole grains because you get a lot of protection. It makes you stronger in the end. It makes you a better kitchen vixen. So, thank you for joining me today. This is Elizabeth Brown, your kitchen vixen, signing off. Remember, eat more whole grains. I'll see you next time when we talk about aphrodisiacs and zinc.